Scattered across this great country are automotive treasures, collector cars owned by top enthusiasts, rare gems of rich pedigree. We invite them all to come to Auto Geek's Garage and show off their proudest vehicles while we get to ask, what's in Auto Geek's Garage? Welcome to a new episode of What's in Auto Geek's Garage. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and my special guest this week is Dave Bowman from Motorhead Garage. Now, Dave Bowman's already up front talking to the owner, Dan Braden, of this really cool 1939 Graham Spirit of Motion. I tell you what, Dan, this is a fantastic car, and folks, take a look at it. As you can see, it's got an unusual shape on it. I really like the front of this, that kind of that shark nose shape, Dan. Tell me a little bit about the car. Where did you get it, and why? Well, my dad always wanted a Graham. He uh, said it was his car of his dream, so when I started going to car shows, he always asked me if I'd seen any Grams, and recently I found it online, and I went up to Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, Larry and Jill were the previous owners, and I got it six months ago. So you're the proud owner. Now, one of the things I've noticed on this, folks, is you notice here the unusual shape of the headlamps up here, square in front. Of course, you got this shark nose on here. But tell me about the engine, and, and I want to see how this works here. Open that up for me, Dan. Well, it's a 93 horsepower flathead six. And actually, some of them came with an option for a supercharger, which gave you 120 horsepower. Ah. So this is the flathead six, 93 horsepower. Yes, sir. Original engine in the thing. Pretty darn cool. Let's walk on around here. Boy, I'll tell you what. Heavy built, I'll tell you that. But you know, it's pretty nice restoration they've done here. As you can see, you go up here, it's got the uh, little vent here, the old style air conditioning on this. And if we open up the inside of it, look at this, Dan. This looks like it's uh, almost original. I guess this is a replacement, but it's uh, period correct, right? Yes, sir. And if you notice inside the big steering wheel, that's for the Armstrong power steering unit that it has on there. Well built car, but if we go on here in the back, this is something else that I like too. If you look at this, these tail lights are mounted high. They were ahead of their time, weren't they? Right, now they require them there now, so. So you got a lot, you've done a lot of work on this thing, but you know, like any restoration, there's always a little bit more you have to do. Mike has found some key items back here that he can take care of. What'd you find, Mike? Well, Dave, I walked around, looked at the car, and the paint's in pretty good shape. You've done a good job on the paint there, Dan. But one of the things I've noticed is there's a lot of chrome on this car, and there's a lot of rubber. And just like the car's an antique, this rubber's antique. It's probably pretty hard to find nowadays, isn't it? Yes. So one of the things you want to do, just like maintaining the paint, you want to take and you want to take and maintain this rubber seal around these windows and any other place on the car. Now over here, I've got some products from the Wolfgang line. And one of the products they make is an exterior trim sealant. Now this is really popular on new cars because you know a lot of new cars have a lot of plastic and rubber trim on the outside. But you can also use it up here in a place like this. I got a little thing, we call this a finger pocket. And this comes in real handy for applying all kinds of products. But you just take and put a little bit of this on your pad. Then come in here and just work this in, kind of like you're putting lotion on dry skin. I'm going to take and work this in and coat it. And see how it's kind of restoring a nice dark black look to that? Mm -hmm. So not only is it making it look good, but it's also going to preserve it against the elements and help it to hold up over time. So you won't have to replace that again down the road. Then after you apply that, come in with a clean microfiber towel, wipe any excess off the glass and off the paint around it. Now that is protected and sealed. Ready to go. You can use that on all the different rubbers in the car, right? That's right. Rubber, plastic, even vinyl. So, and it's a sealant that's going to protect it and hold up for a long time. It's not one of these ones that just wears off or mm -hmm. runs off in the rain. And doesn't harm the paint? Not going to hurt the paint at all, but you do want to wipe it off because you want it to look smeary like I did there. Now, another thing, you got a lot of chrome. And on antique and classic cars, that was the, that was the trend, you know, now everything's plastic. But the chrome, I noticed you got a little water spotting, and the chrome will get dull and it'll oxidize. And so you want to take and you want to clean it and polish and protect it. Now, on the Wolfgang line, they actually got a very extensive uh, lineup of products here. They got an aggressive compound, so if it's in really bad shape, they got a fine polish, and then they got a concourse polish. Now, yours is in pretty good shape, so I think we could just start with this. But that's one of the cool things about the Wolfgang line, they got a product for everything. So take the lid off of this. And again, I'm just going to go over here to the finger pocket. This is kind of nice because then you don't got to grip it or anything. Just reach down here and grab some of this. Come down here and just take and apply it. 
work it in really good. What this is going to do is it's going to restore the brilliance and the clarity to the surface of the chrome. And so just like the paint's all shiny, now the chrome's going to be all shiny. It's going to kind of complete that look for the car. That's the thing that makes everybody look at it and go, ooh, ah. Then wipe off that excess. It's all polished up. Looks like brand new. Now, does that put a little bit of a coating on there too to help protect the, the chrome? That it it, sh it does. And it leaves a polymer protection on there so it's going to last longer. There you go, man. Great. You're going to have a great looking car when he gets done with it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. What's in Auto Geek's Garage is being brought to you by Meguiar's, Meguiar's car care product since 1901. By Lake Country, pioneering manufacturers of buffing and polishing products sold worldwide. And by Minzerna, the world's finest polishing materials. What do the following award-winning car designers and builders have in common? Chip Boost. Brian Fuller, Alan Johnson, Justin Padfield, Mark Stilo, Steve Stroke, Denny Terzich, Troy Trepanier. They all depend on ARP fasteners. Leading car builders depend on ARP fasteners, and so should you. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. The best looking cars on the road deserve only the best when it comes to car care. Pinnacle Natural Brilliance. Pinnacle Sovereign Pace Wax is all natural. It uses ivory carnauba wax to create a sizzling shine. Pinnacle literally has a product for every square inch of your car. For more information about the entire line of Pinnacle products and for some valuable tips and techniques, check out PinnacleWax.com or AutoGeek.net. Hey, Dave, can you hear me back there? Just barely. <laughs> Man, this car is really long. I think this is what they call a land yacht. Yeah, I think so. Well, folks, what we have here is we've got Steve Arbori here, who's got this 59 Oldsmobile 88. Right. Steve, this is an incredible car. I mean, this is what, 20 feet long? 22. 22 feet long, including the... Uh, the uh, that, yeah. Doodod back here, right? Continental kit. Continental kit, you got it. Anyway, tell me a little bit about this car. Where did you find it, and why did you want it? Well, I bought it in uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, my very first car when I was graduating from high school was a 1959 Dynamic 88 convertible, just like this, except it was all black. It wasn't as good a shape as this. Right. So you're trying to relive the old memories, yeah, right? Yeah, and I thought it was going to rejuvenate it, but it didn't do didn't, anything. It <laughs> didn't do any good. Well, you know, something I've noticed on here, I, I haven't seen for a long time on this side, you got fender, uh, the uh, curb feelers on right. there. On that, only on that side, because when you parallel park, that's the side that you exactly. need it. And the Continental kit, this isn't original, though. This was no. an aftermarket. Aftermarket, right? yeah. But it looks pretty good on there. It does make the car look pretty long. Let's yeah. walk up along the side here and take a look at it. I tell you, the paint is magnificent on this. The interior is absolutely beautiful. And look at the inside here. Let me open this up so folks can see it. Sure. Then over here. And look at that interior in here. Boy, I tell you, if you grew up back in the 50s, this could bring back some memories. Well, it did. I don't know what else we can do with this thing. What size engine does it have in it? This is originally 371, but it has been re rebuilt, so it's probably about a 400 cube now. Yeah. But it, it, it's still got the original two-barrel carburetor. Uh, it's all original generator, no alternator on here. Well, I'll tell you what, you, this is absolutely almost flawless, but I'm sure Mike has got some good tips here that will let you keep this thing looking flawless. What do you got, Mike? Well, you're right. The paint absolutely looks flawless on here, but one of the things you want to do is you always want to keep it up. That way you won't have to go back in and do any correction work. Uh -huh. And uh, I was talking to you earlier. Didn't you say you do all your work by hand? Yes. Well, my hat's off to you because for working by hand, you've really created a nice looking finish. But let me share with you a little tip on how to take a lot of the work out of waxing this because of how big it is by using a machine. One of the benefits too is when you wax by hand, typically you hold a wax pad like this. So it's sandwiched between your thumb and your four fingers. That means just the pressure from your four fingers is about the only part of this pad you're, you're working on. It's a little area about like this. So the benefit when you work by machine 
is you take a nice soft pad like this. This is a, a finishing pad or a waxing pad for applying wax. Place this on a DA polisher like I got here, and now you're going to have the entire face of this pad working for you with equal pressure over the entire surface, plus it takes all the work out of the job. Now what I got here is a product by Minzerna USA. Now Minzerna makes some of the best polishes in the world, but they also make a great polymer sealant, okay? So it's kind of like a wax, only it tends to last longer. It's going to really amp up the gloss. Now, Mike, you were saying you're a little hesitant about using a power, you know, a buffer on this thing. Well, I'm not very good at things. <laughs> well, I think when Mike shows you there, it'll take that fear out of it because it's really easy. Before I put the wax on, let me just show you something. This is a polishing pad. Let me just show you how safe this is. I'm going to put this on the six setting. That's really high speed. And watch this. And the point is, see how it didn't hurt my hand? It's not going to hurt your paint. Very, very safe. Okay, so let me just show you how to work this. Now, usually for removing swirls of the tool like this, you'd be at a high speed setting. I'm going to bump this down to the four, put my cord over the shoulder so I don't drag this against your paint. Then I'm just going to take, and I want to take and put a tape line down here first. We'll just see if we can amp up the gloss a little bit here. Because it looks good to start with, but you know, nothing looks as good as a fresh coat of wax. See how easy that is? Yeah, and it doesn't hurt the, uh, you know, the edges. No, you're not no. going to burn the paint off of that. Right? Very, very gentle. Spread that out. See how easy that was? Yeah. Okay. Now this is a wax you want to let dry. And it dries, if put down a thin coat, it dries pretty quickly. Put a little air over there. Then take your clean microfiber towel, fold four ways, just come down here. Look how easy that wipes off. Look at the difference in that. Okay, now let's pull the tape line off. And again, we started out with something that looked really good to start with. So we're not going to see a major improvement. But I think you can see that it's a little glossier, a little more clear uh -huh. up here. Yeah. I can count my hairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> see, that, now, now that you got that, now you know how to do the rest of the car. Oh, he's not going to do the whole thing? I no, I just did a spot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you for bringing it by. You got a beautiful car. Thank you. Blackfire Car Care products are proudly made in the USA and offer a complete line of interior and exterior products to clean, condition, polish, and protect every inch of your car from top to bottom. Blackfire products are formulated using state-of-the-art polymer technology for ease of use and superior performance. Blackfire compounds, polishes, and waxes are famous for creating that deep, wet shine that everyone loves. Don't just turn heads, create whiplash. Visit AutopiaCarCare.com. Whether you're an automotive enthusiast, professional detailer, or body shop technician, the secret to the perfect shine is machine polishing with Lake Country pads. The key to a flawless show car finish is matching the right pad to the job, and Lake Country has a pad for every detailing project. Lake Country is the industry leader in product development with over 60 years of hands-on detailing experience. When you're ready to machine polish, buy the best Lake Country pads. AutoGeek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its very best. Mothers, Meguiar's, 3M, Pinnacle, just to name a few. In fact, AutoGeek carries over 60 brands with thousands of unique items. The expert staff can answer any question you have about any product via email, discussion forum, live chat, or by phone. The selection is huge, the prices are low, and they ship it right to your door. It couldn't possibly get any easier. AutoGeek.net, we are car care. Dr. David Gaducci, president of Optimum Polymer Technologies, is a PhD organic chemist who helped create the clear coat paint technologies used on cars today. If he can make the paint, take my word for it, he's more than qualified to make paint care products for your vehicle. OptiCoat 2 is a permanent paint coating that you can apply yourself and it won't wear off like normal car waxes, so it will last longer and thus protect longer. Check out OptimumCarCare.com.
It's time now for Off the Shelf. Quick tips on detailing your car with Mike Phillips. And brought to you by Meguiar's Car Care Products. This week's email comes from Casey out in Oregon. Casey writes, Mike, I've tried every glass cleaner under the sun, and while my windows look good while the car's in the garage, as soon as I drive outside, I see all kinds of streaks and haze. Does Meguiar's make a glass cleaner that actually works? The good news, Casey, is Meguiar's just introduced a brand new glass cleaner called Perfect Clarity Glass Cleaner. Now, this comes in two versions. It comes in a pump spray and an aerosol. This is ammonia-free. That means it's safe on tinted windows. It's also strong enough to clean the worst things that are going to build up on your glass. On the outside, that's going to be things like bug spray, tree sap mist, and road grime. On the inside, that's things like vinyl fog and smoker's film. But here's a couple tips to help you get really clean, streak-free glass. First, spray the glass cleaner on, spread it around with a clean microfiber towel, turn to the dry side to polish that off to a crystal clear piece of glass. And remember this, as you're working around the car, removing gunk off the glass is going to be building up on the face of your microfiber towel. So you want to switch over to a clean microfiber towel as you're working around the car. Don't try to clean all the glass with just one microfiber towel. And that's this week's tip from Off the Shelf. Welcome back. You know, we've got a really cool car here. In fact, this is one of my favorite body styles. It's the business coupe. And I still got my special guest, Dave Bowman, back here. He's back here talking to the owner. What do we got back here, Dave? Hey, Mike, this is what I call the ultimate rat rod. You know, we have Gary Romer here who owns this. And Gary, this is kind of like the classy rat rod. I mean, it's really kind of nice looking. And you've got a unique bumper back here. You got uh, connecting rods. That's it, two Chevy connecting rods, a little dual exhaust, nothing fancy, little pinstriping uh, LED lights in the back to keep it update. Looks good. Thank you. Looks good. And I notice here on the paint, this is sort of a matte finish on here. Why that? Yeah, well, it's the old style look that we had years ago. We mm -hmm. didn't ha wouldn't have the money for the, for the high dollar paint, so we uh, did what we had out of a spray can. <laughs> and uh, it actually is too glossy, but... Uh, you did this with a spray can? Almost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Anyway, no, no uh, running board on here. Got a neat yeah. looking interior in here. And look right up here. This is what I'm seeing. Uh, the rat. The ultimate yeah, rat. there rod. it is. Uncle Rat sitting there waiting, uh, keeping warm in the wintertime down All right, there. You know? I know you got some neat stuff in there. Looks like you got a low-car dipstick yeah, in there. Yeah, some low-car products are excellent. Uh, no wipers, though. We haven't got to that yet. Well, I know. Sun that. visor. Yeah, there's but my But here's my, the ultimate right here. That's, your that's uh, my, air conditioning. Uh, on that. Fresh air air. That is yeah. looking good. But right up here, you got your spun aluminum wheel uh, covers. Yeah, rear covers uh, by uh, Moon Corporation. Very nice. It does the job for the look of the car. And what up front? You got that tank. Is that uh, yeah. functional or just? Well, right now it's not. It's be an extra overflow for the water. And uh, under the hood, we have a uh, small block Chevy 358 Camaro clip, disc brakes, drum in the rear. Excellent riding car. It's got a 700 R uh, automatic, but the automatic overdrive is excellent for a highway. And you've been taking all over the country, right? I've been Daytona, West Coast, Bradenton. So yeah, this, this is there. no trailer queen. Oh, no, this it's, this it's gets not. around. Well, Mike, what can you do for this? Now, you know, it's matte finish, but still you want it to look good. You want to keep it up. So what, can, what do you got for that? Well, we have a term called extreme makeover. <laughs> and this car fits that description. You know, we have a tool here called the Swirl Finder Light, and I don't even need it for this paint because there's just so many swirls. The paint's all dull and oxidized looking. And it has that matte finish, but I, I think we can actually bring some gloss up on this if you don't mind me trying. Give it a yeah, try. Let's go we'll give it first. A shot okay, there. we'll tell you what. I want to put a tape line down here so we can see the difference before and after. And the tool I'm going to use on this, Gary, is called the Cyclo Polisher. And what's unique about the Cyclo Polisher is this has dual counter rotating, counterbalance heads. Okay, so you got two heads working for you at the same time. It's very lightweight. It's very well built. In fact, these came out sometime in like 1951, 1952. They were meant to uh, first polish out aluminum without putting swirls in aluminum. And they found out for the same reason you can polish out paint without putting swirls in the paint. And believe it or not, they used to be able to get a, a bracket for this and hang this on the back of a door and use it for a back massager after you're done buffing at your car all day I long. I like that. Okay, well, I'm going to take and put a little bit of a swirl remover on here. Then we'll buff out a section and we'll wipe it off and see how it looks. And if it looks good, my friend Dave here said he'll finish the whole car for you. Oh, a likely I story. <laughs> I'll even give my hand. Now, Gary, <laughs> as long as he shows you how to do it, you'll know oh, how to do geez. it at your house. Eh? Okay. Here's another thing about this tool. This is the new Mark 
Pro, uh, Mark V Pro Series, this has a variable speed adjuster on here. And so what I like to do is put this down on a low setting to uh, spread the product out. I'm going to bump it up to the high setting to go to town on your paint here. Sounds good. Okay, first I'm just going to spread this out. And having that low setting is kind of nice because you don't splatter everybody around you. So when you're doing that, you put that on high then to get it going, right? Yep, I put this on the high setting and then one thing you want to notice is I'm not moving the polisher fast over the paint. I'm moving it nice and slow. That's a nice machine. Yeah. yeah very nice. That's easy to do. You know, it's done. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about burning the paint either of that. I was just going to say, you know, if you're using a hand bucket, you got to be careful. I actually brushed out a candy apple paint job one time. Here's a tip. Always turn it off, let those pads stop spinning before you pull the tool off or you'll throw splatter everywhere. Okay. All right, so Mike, what do we got? What we got now is we're going to take and wipe this residue off. You know, when you're using a polish, you never want to let it dry. That's only for waxes. Come down here and wipe this off using a clean microfiber towel. And it's going to look like we just put a brand new paint job on here, Gary. It sure does. But you still have that matte finish, but there's a shine to it. You know, it just really looks clean. Uh, yeah, what a difference, huh? Well, that works. So what do you think? Can you handle this on your own now? I'm going to have to now. Check out that before <laughs> yeah, and after difference. That. Yeah. yeah. You know, I can see oh, Dave's yeah. reflection, yeah. in fact. Smile, yeah. Dave. You're looking good there. Yeah. Mike, a heck of a job. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Well, all you got to do now is the rest of the car. There you go. <laughs> now that was a lot of fun. This is a really good looking car. I've always been a big fan of the uh, coupe. Hey, we're going to have another cool car here, so come on back. What's in Auto Geek's Garage is being brought to you by Pinnacle, Science and Nature in Harmony, by Wolfgang, complete line of world-class car care products, and by Ragtop, exclusively formulated for fabric and vinyl tonneau covers. For a lot of us, the automobile is the second biggest investment that we make. Now, one of the best ways to protect this investment is with the entire line of Wolfgang car care products. Wolfgang Fusion uses German-engineered super polymers blended with ivory carnauba wax for long-lasting protection with a three-dimensional crystal-like shine. For more information about the entire line of Wolfgang car care products and time-saving tips and techniques, check out WolfgangCarCare.com or AutoGeek.net. Amazing results, even in full sun. Now go have fun. Matt Steele here for Ragtop. You know, I love convertibles and soft tops, but we've all seen what can happen when they're neglected. Ragtop Convertible Protectant is the only way to protect that soft top and keep it looking brand new. Now, here's the best part. It's as easy as cleaning the top and spraying it on. Ragtop will not only maintain the new appearance, but it offers UV protection and the water will beat up and roll right off. You can purchase Ragtop at AutoGeek.net and other authorized dealers. You ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. Let's get out of here. Welcome back. You know, we've got a really special car here. This is a 1955 Ford Crown Victoria. What do you think, Dave? I'll tell you what, you don't see these very often, but this is unusual. You know, it's in great shape. A lot of them are kind of rusted out, but this is a little bit unusual. We've got the owner here, Don, who has put this thing together. Don, tell me a little bit more about this car. It's unique. Yes. Uh, I had one in high school in 1955, blue and white, mm -hmm. but not the crown, it was a Victoria. Yeah. Okay, I saw this in Auto Trader magazine over in Bradington. So anyway, I bought it and uh, I said, oh, you know, I heard that they made uh, in 1954, 55 and 56 uh, glass tops. I never saw one, 
but you know, so but you I, wanted one, right? I, yes, sir. <laughs> I, I mean, you've got to be different when you're in the in the show car business. You know what I mean? Yep. A lot of people put a Continental on the back. I just wanted to be different with a glass top. Like top came out of Canada. Uh, a firm up there was making. Now yep. somebody in the United States is making them too. But I got mine up there. So you got the only fifty-five Crown Vic around, right? How many do they make of the uh, Crown Vicks in the day? Well, they made 1,100 with the glass in it in the whole United States. And, and I don't know how many they did in 54, but in 56 they dropped back to 600. If you bought one in 55, you're going to run right out in 56 and buy another <laughs> with, with a glass top, you know? Well, I'll tell you what, they did a fantastic job on it. Yep. Looks like it came right from the factory, but you know, you got to take care of it. Uh -huh. And Mike has got some of the keys here in order to make that thing last okay. for a long time. Yeah. You know, they refer to this as a glass roof, but actually it's plexiglass, not glass like you'd find in a household window. So it's plastic. And one of the things about plastic is it actually will scratch very easily. So you want to clean it. You want to use something that's very soft and gentle to it, like a clean microfiber towel and, of course, a plastic cleaner. Now, what I have right here is called Plastic Care. This is an aerosol plastic cleaner, conditioner, and protectant in one. And what's kind of handy about this is you just can spray it on, take a clean soft microfiber towel, spread it around. It's going to remove all the dirt without putting any scratches into it and keep this nice and clear so you can enjoy it while you're driving around. So you just take it like this, spray some on. And here's a little tip. Anytime you're working on plastic, you want to make sure your towel is clean, you know. So I pulled this out of my cabinet over there, but I'm just going to take a minute to inspect it, make sure there's nothing that's scratchy on here. So I put a scratch in there. Then take and spread this out. Flip over to the dry side, and then polish this up to a nice dry shine. And this instantly removed all the dirt and the dust that was up here and restored optimal clarity of this piece of plexiglass roof up here. So now it's clean and clear. Boy, that does make a difference. You could use that, you know, it doesn't have to be just this, but on any car that's got glass tops or plastic tops on it, right? Any car, motorhome, boats with Isinglass. Motorcycles, motorcycles. Any type of clear plastic, this is a great product for that. Well, it sure is. That's something I think I'm going to take advantage of. <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode. Join me next week. I'll have a new celebrity guest and four new really cool cars to check out. All products featured on today's program are available from autogeek.net.